bar going for you. Notes ready. Okay. Before we get started with our meeting, we're going to stand and have a pledge and a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing. Father, we thank you for this time together, and we pray that you would help us make wise decisions for the school district and we pray that our teachers and staff are having a good summer and we look forward to next month when we have our kids back and um, we pray that you would just go before us and get this year off to a good start in jesus name i pray amen, amen. thank you we'll call our meeting to order and we are absent one member at the moment corey will be joining us a little bit later <clears throat> um, so the first thing on our agenda are <laughs> the consent items we have the minutes from last month and the monthly uh, check register and then the handbooks for each of the schools the board has had time to look over those ahead of time so if there are no questions we're going to consider those all approved by consent uh, unanimous consent sorry Next, we are going to have comments by board members. Um, Sheila, do you have anything for us this month? Yes, <laughs> right now. I had to get Hayden's help. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sending you, I hope. No, it wouldn't go. Oh, no. Okay, I'll have to read it. Okay. I will send it to you later. This okay. is a picture. This is something that... I took on last year because uh, I was concerned about the teacher retirement being up for uh, consideration and negotiation and there are lots of people, including the chairman of the teacher retirement committee, to lower it. And I did go to a public meeting and I did voice my opinion. Uh, and they're having another joint retirement <clears throat> committee with Bill Samples and that's the person that I took out in a staged area in the village and he came the next day i went to the hearing the next day and he sought me out and he said I i'm on your side blah 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 blah. and i said well i'm here to watch well now they're going to have a, um, a public hearing along with uh, representative les warren uh, have now announced the dates and very cleverly i mean i was an administrator i know how to do this stuff you have the meeting in the afternoon when the teachers are all in their classrooms and all of the leaders of the Arkansas Educational Association are busy doing their work. So I plan to go, there are two of them, the 5th and the 6th uh, in Hot Springs, then the 24th of September in Rogers and Benton. Well, these are in September, the 5th and the 6th, okay. at 9.30 in the morning, the location to be announced. And um, 9.30 in the morning? That's busy time in a classroom. If you're an administrator, it's just as busy. Don't mess with teachers' salaries and retirement. That's my premise. But I wanna go with more than one voice. And I would like the board to consider endorsing me to represent you as a committee of five to say we are opposed to reducing the teacher retirement plan or messing with it or denying it or limiting the number of years for vested interest into the system. So I can say with all proud dignity, <laughs> I am representing the Fountain Lake School Board. Now I haven't ever had that said before in the six years I've been on the board. So I don't know if it's out of order or it's just conducive to something that you would be agreeable to. But if you are, I'd like to propose that you endorse Sheila Ford to speak in unison for our board uh, lobbying not to reduce, limit, or change the teacher retirement. And that affects administrators too. Right. Because I was an administrator as well as a teacher. And every month on the first day that nice check is deposited 
to my checking account. Mm -hmm. And I've been on that for over a decade. So I really feel I'm getting back all the money that I put in. Well, maybe not yet, but I don't plan to give it up yet. So we know uh, I if propose that you endorse my voice at this September 6th meeting. And you're going to forward us this email yes. with the details? Yeah, I just... So, you know, a lot of times you, you might ask us to write letters to our congressman or something like that. Yeah. So it might even be that um, we could... Sign a letter? Compose a letter mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, with some of the facts in there and then, you know, have it, you know, say, hey, I brought a letter from my board. And um, so <laughs> let us look at the details of yeah. that. Okay. <clears throat> and then maybe we can formulate a letter or something that would <laughs> speak as a voice. Yeah. See, so. all of these minds are better than one. <laughs> so I did uh, propose a motion. Uh, may we vote on it? Or is there any discontent with that idea oh I'm not, no. no no I mean I, I don't have any problem with that I don't know all the details yeah. all right <clears throat> so um, if you have an issue with it you can always call me and complain okay. well, I think it would be beneficial that uh, once they receive the information putting together that letter and then having boards unanimous approval to yes, or against the these letter. things yes. through the letter then that gives you a vehicle to Right. represent the board mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, so let's when's the drop dead yeah. date to uh, get everything organized you said the first meeting was in September, September or yeah. August um, no the September 5th is okay. hope it's gonna be in hope this one is gonna be <clears throat> the sixth so in let's, hot springs but the location is to be announced okay let's um, aim for getting information and getting a letter put together and getting it bringing it up in the next meeting yeah. okay. as a, you know, That's say, great. here's a letter and we'll Corey all sign it. And yeah, sign and it. that way, well. yeah, Corey right. will be here. Okay, perfect. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that update. There's another opportunity that I'll send you as well uh, next week with uh, Kids Count uh, organization mm -hmm. in Little Rock, very politically active, uh, supporting children, family, and youth, and uh, they are meeting here in Hot Springs, and I'll send you that information too. It's going to be September 25th, and um, Dana, you've gone with me to mm -hmm. those before. Sometimes they're very mediocre, but um, uh, Dr. Zimmerman, who is their educational leader at uh, Kids Count in Little Rock, is going to be making the presentation of where we stand with the state legislature as far as children are concerned. So okay. I do plan to go. And that one will be here in Hot Springs? Yes. Okay. It's, yeah. It's <clears throat> Good. downtown. Good. That's we'll remind important. everybody again in August. Yes. And probably in September because that will be after the September meeting, I yes. think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Any other comments by any other board members? Anybody else got anything? Okay. Good. Well, I screened. You had to know I have lots more. But I screen them out. You know, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't want to just load you down with, you know, what Tony Proko or whatever his name yeah. is is sending out. I mean, you know, I want to see his face. I don't want to read his literature. So, you know. <laughs> Listen, you know, this is my last year, so you know, I'm holding nothing back. <laughs> oh. All right. So let's move into the superintendent's update. Dr. Murphy, <laughs> financial uh, review? Sure. Uh, if you'll go to the year to date, um, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into this when we go into our work session. But in a general sense, what you're viewing there is a total of all eight funds. Uh, we will go through an exercise to further provide clarity of the purpose of each fund. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay with us through to the work session. But in a general sense, uh, with our year ending of 1819, it uh, appears total funds at the bottom that we ended up with a surplus going from $4.4 million roughly as a beginning balance to $4.986 million as an ending balance. So uh, we did have a surplus within the overall budget. And we'll kind of go into each of those funds as we go through our work session because that'll help frame the overview of how we design the 1920 school year budget. So uh, uh, we did uh, 
work diligently from staffing to our expenditures, supplies, contracts, software, uh, and, and we were very fortunate that our local tax dollars came in uh, above the expectation and we collected roughly uh, right at 100% of our wow. local tax dollars this year, which That's is crazy. just uh, somewhat unheard of. Yeah. So uh, uh, we'll go into that uh, a little bit more in depth uh, a little further in the meeting. So uh, any questions mm -hmm. at this point regarding financial review? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that uh, each of you are aware of how we're kind of opening the year as far as August. Uh, we'll have new teachers back on the 5th. If you go to item B there, I've just got a uh, brief overview of kind of the opening agenda. Would highlight for you uh, beyond our new teachers, uh, the first day, the 6th, will be when all teachers are back. And uh, so we're going to have all teachers back reporting to the buildings, and then we're going to come together and do some district training in the afternoon and then uh, set the stage for an objective that we're attempting to accomplish on the morning of August the 7th. Leadership team and I will finalize this process uh, on Monday, uh, but we've got to the framework established. We think that we know what we're wanting to accomplish, but our objective on the uh, the following day is to have a scavenger hunt that uh, that goes throughout Hot Springs Village but also encompasses the school district and so objectively what we're seeking to do is we would like to uh, have new staff as well as existing staff become very familiar with uh, the diversity that exists within our district boundary and, and so uh, I feel it's imperative that uh, our staff uh, is involved in this process, and so we'll team them into groups of roughly four or five, and we're going to figure out the logistics, probably a selfie at the site location, and send that in to confirm the site locations. Uh, we're not going to make this a race because we don't want to create any <laughs> chaos in the village. So our intent though is to truly, uh, we would want staff members to see uh, specific areas within the district where we have some of our students coming from, where significant poverty may exist, and then we want to see our staff to see where we have true affluence to where what the village has to offer as a whole. So uh, we feel like uh, in review of, of uh, where we were at last spring, level of connection, this is our next step in terms of continuing to expand the partnership and the relationship as a whole with our taxpaying community. And so uh, that's kind of an activity we'll be pulling off on the 7th. If you want to join us at the Balboa Pavilion around 1130 in the morning, we're going to, we're going to take our chance with the heat but uh, it'll be in a shaded area with fans and we plan to eat around 11:30 and do some networking we're still contemplating how we might uh, be able to maybe entice retired educators to join us hmm. uh, and and see if we could maybe have the opportunity for those interested in volunteering have a framework and an opportunity to get them signed up to partner with us and 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 really uh, we're doing i'm doing this uh, for the Fountain Lake School District, but I'm also working with the Arkansas Community Foundation to formulate kind of answering the call for literacy in North Garland County. And so I've been involving the Community Foundation, uh, Mountain Pine, and the Jesseville District in how we might be able to engage uh, and, and embrace more people engaging and developing not only literacy awareness, but also how can they help out. How can we collectively as a community uh, change uh, the degree of the number of students uh, and, and the literacy within families? So that's kind of two things going associated with what that topic entitles. But uh, on that day, our number one objective in this scavenger hunt is really to allow our staff to maybe be paired with people they don't know so that they have to kind of get to know someone that they don't know and kind of uh, figure out how to get around in our school district. Our school district is very long and uh, rectangular. It goes all the way over past Crows out towards uh, Nickel Bill. And so they'll have to make decisions on what locations they're going to go visit. And so we might, in our thought process, you know, assign point values 
to some of the more discreet locations to find and, and allow them to use Google Maps and technology to integrate into their planning process and we'll just see how they do. And uh, we just feel like it could be a good team building activity and hopefully we can build on that on how we address uh, not only our students but our community at large. And so that's going on on the, uh, what did I say, the 7th? Yeah, and then from there, as you follow along, the 8th would be on that Thursday, and then everybody will be back in their buildings doing, uh, we'll have lunch at the cafeteria, Church of Christ will be here, and they will be uh, sponsoring that activity for us. And then uh, the following Monday, um, we will have on August 12th, the countywide PD, where all educators in the county come together. Um, <clears throat> And we plan on uh, having shirts that we'll hand out to all of our staff on the first district day. They'll be in, in their shirts when they go into the village and those activities. And then they'll also wear their short shirts to the uh, countywide activity, which will be uh, collectively together on, and I think this year it's going to be at the convention center. So uh, uh, if any of you are interested in that activity, uh, any of these activities, just give me a call. Let me know that you're interested. It's it, you don't. It's not you. Got, you have to be there. But if you are, I definitely want to recognize you as members of our board of education at any of these functions. So just let me know, and we can arrange accordingly. And then, of course, uh, we'll have specialty meetings going on on the 13th, and working in rooms and building level meetings. And then, of course, we uh, start school on the 14th. Uh, would tell you that curriculum night, help me out guys, is going to be which night? Open house, Open house is what? Monday. On Monday, Monday the 12th. Is that correct? Uh, we're doing a pre-K through one in my lower building. Open house is on the 8th. So the pre-K one, just so that everyone listening can hear, would be which day, Katie? Thursday the 8th. Thursday the 8th. Okay. A right. question. Uh-huh. Um, how many days do they get to work in their room? Well, part of that when we have the built-in time as far as the building level, that's pretty much a, a portion of that time is allocated to working in room and a portion of that time is structured. Uh, I know the day that we are going to the pavilion, because we have the open house in the evening uh, or, or after the pavilion day, I think we've kind of set that time aside for them to kind of come back and work in their rooms at that point. We've kind of talked that we give them that afternoon. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the countywide day as well. So we're giving them a couple of afternoons mm -hmm. to where there's not structured time. And uh, it'll, it'll depend upon the principal uh, within each building in terms of that design. I don't structure within these days from a district perspective. Uh, you know, I usually allow those principals to design. When I say building level, it's pretty much what they're designing in terms of their activities within that day with their leadership teams. That's not very much time. Well, I just want to go have, on record uh, saying that. We have a total, that's the total number of contractual days, and that's with an additional day that we have that we've pulled out of the school year. So we've eliminated the day coming back from Christmas break where we had a planning day coming back and we put that on the front end of the school year and the contractual agreement is a total of 190 days. You see those days, there is a total of an additional, is it six days, principal directed, four days? And so a portion of those could be used for... Five, five elementary two? Yes, all buildings are the same in terms of contractual days, and so some of those days can be used to have the flexibility to work in your rooms, but this summer, many of our teachers have either been going through RISE awareness training or RISE proficiency training, uh, and if they don't go through that process by in another year, uh, it'll hinge on their certificate. And so we've got some certificate requirements as it relates to the RISE training, and then of course, uh, you, each year in this plan, there are required professional development hours that uh, must be fulfilled in a rotation. Uh, Mr. Campbell helped me out this year. The topic that we're going to be using in terms of the uh, area. Child maltreatment, suicide. Yes. Um, 
suicide is what we'll be doing. So it's mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but those rotate based on, and, and so there's four of those topics, and they go on a rotational basis, and we're required to do them with uh, annual district time frames together. So, uh, um, you know, is it the ethics every year? Even though yeah, we have a different, we can choose what we want to have also in addition to that as right. a school district. All right, mm -hmm. one last question. And sure. I'm showing my... Uh, lack of staying current who or what is flip flipping oh uh flip flipping is is uh, that is a program that uh i viewed that benton uses in their secondary buildings and so it's really about building capacity and relationships and how do you go about dealing with uh and uh it's the soft skills the communication piece, the handshake, the eye contact, and getting kids to overcome and understand. We have many cultures that exist, and, and depending on jobs and positions, eye contact is not a strength of many people. And so it teaches uh, collaborative skills in how to address and prepare for <coughs> communication exercises. It, it uh, builds kind of a back end approach. Uh, Flip Flippin' has an entire system just like Stephen Covey has. And so Stephen Covey, you have adopted the uh, seven, habits. seven Habits in the middle school and we adopted that as well in the elementary school in my prior district. And then at the secondary level we ended up, we felt like that Flip Flippin' um, fit better for secondary age students. And so uh, it really is uh, it's a philosophy around uh, motivating students and student engagement. And so as an outcome, it's going to provide some strategies on building relationships. And, and so the building of the relationships ultimately increases student engagement. And that's, okay. in a nutshell, what Flip Flippin is going to bring to the table. And they're going to try to do that as a capstone in roughly, what, an hour and 15 minutes. With so, the entire school with all teachers and so it's probably going to be I would say designed to be motivational and humorous to kind of bring uh, what they've done usually in that venue is kind of a kick start getting everybody synergized to come back to school and so it's a way to pay a motivational speaker that has educational content and and you take that singular venue and everybody gets to experience it to reducing costs and go ahead. My only question was on student attendance. We said 190 contractual days. What's the days of student attendance? Student attendance is 178. 178. Yeah. Is there an honor requirement for that? A what? Honors. You have to have so many hours, 178 days? It's the equivalence therein. Uh, you get some flexibility in that. It's going to begin with a 178-day expectation. Uh, the state of Arkansas has waived uh, an alternative method of instruction up to five days based on inclement weather, utility outage, things so of that nature that qualify, but technically you're looking at 178 days and when you look at instructional hours, that's what's allowed us to have the instructional hours we have within the week and still release early on Wednesday. And that's where our professional development's coming yes. in on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that, that was where I was leading to. Thank you. And as we leave this um, agenda for August, I just want to encourage y'all, if you can come um, on the 6th, which is Tuesday, I know some of, you know, Cindy works, may not be able to, but at 12 o'clock, that's when you're doing the welcome back for teachers. That's always a good time to, you know, <laughs> say hi to everybody um and the open houses uh for preschool and then you know school-wide mm -hmm. i would encourage y'all if y'all can come to the open houses just even to float mm -hmm. around as board members just say hi see who's you know just be present if mm -hmm. you have time it's always a fun thing so okay we'll move on from that and okay. let's go into the director of instructional services mm -hmm. So you have the um, listed there first at uh, the Dawson ABC Preschool. We put that on the agenda. So just to let you know that we did get that partnership yeah. with Dawson. So we have 20 additional spaces. Oh, uh, Ms. Curry, yeah, that's great. Works yeah. With, um, Dawson. Uh, we filled the 20 ABC spaces and we have 13 
spots remaining. Seven. seven. I'm sorry, seven, seven spots remaining. Uh, available? available? Yes. Okay. Total. Okay. We have 53 in preschool right this minute. On our campus? On our campus. Okay. So we and we have seven. capacity for 60. Good. So, so far, everybody who's wanted in has, has gotten, gotten in. in. Well, that's Excellent. delightful. Yes. yes. Okay. And, and let's be very clear that the ABC component, Arkansas Better Chance, is providing the funding mechanism for the teacher and the aide. For that and, third and section. And so we're, we have two sections that's going to be funded locally and one section that will be funded through the state. Yeah. Well, your persistence paid off. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Yeah, it is great. I mean, that is a coup. Yeah. yeah. That's a very good thing. So kudos. Uh, the second thing we want to bring you up to speed on is that, you know, you may or may not know that we were on the flex mod schedule at the high school. Mm -hmm. And the high school had some public hearings last uh, spring, mm -hmm. and they've opted to go to a traditional eight period day this coming year. They did decide and on eight. We formally told you that, so we wanted to formally tell you that. And so they'll be on an eight period day. It's going to have better accountability on the attendance side. We couldn't get that linked up with the e-school system. That was an issue. Right. Um, we, we feel like the, the facilities weren't necessarily real conducive to the flex. Um, students probably didn't do everything they needed to do with their SLPs and their ILTs, structured learning time. And Independent. Learning time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we just don't see that there was, I mean, it, it's a little early. <coughs> the numbers don't indicate that, um, that it helped. That it benefited. We, we can't say that the numbers say that it hurt, but. Right. They don't say that it helped either, so mm -hmm. we don't feel uncomfortable with making a change. Mm -hmm. With making this change, we feel more comfortable making this change than risking the thought that it is negatively impacting student mm -hmm. achievement mm -hmm. and yeah. waiting it out to see if we can really determine a trend. So Do you know what kids are? What the trend is? The you know? The eight period day was when the, the classes were really short. Is the school day length changing no. at I mean, all? It's, okay. It's where we are. They're not really short. I, you're looking was at it? a 48, 48, minute, 48 minute period. So okay. your, your instructional time, you, um, you have a little bit of loss there with the passing time. Right. But, but you're still, you're 48 solid minutes <clears throat> if you're using your time. You're, How much time do they have in between classes? Uh, between four and five minutes. Okay. Uh, we have Bell. We're actually going to three minutes. Three minutes? Yes. Okay. okay. Are they going to have time to grab a snack? <laughs> well, they'll have time to get to their next class. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> I like them to have snacks. On our early release day, did we do an abbreviated day for those eight periods, uh, 24 minutes? What do you do on that day? Well, early, early release. Early release. Early release. It's short in time, about 35 minutes. 36 okay. Minutes okay. Period. okay. That way, all of them can make things. One of the teachers' complaints was on early out is we don't get to see our right. seventh and eighth period kids. And that's what. Yes. So now that we've reduced the amount of time, we can still get all eight periods within the day. I understand. Thank you. And there's okay. still a struggle even with that, and because of our shared staff across buildings, we still have to match up those times. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. All right, and then the last thing I have for you, <clears throat> we just went ahead and linked in these initial um, results, and we, we linked them in in this format. Um, my uh, nephew at, at um, Lakeside shared this one with me. He put it together, and, and it didn't have Fountain Lake highlighted. I was able to copy it and highlight Fountain Lake instead of Lakeside. So that, because this is what you, all, this is what we get asked the most is how do we compare to everybody else mm -hmm. and so there you see um, each of the tests each of the grade levels where we fall out in comparison to the other schools in the in the co-op area mm -hmm. and um, I know you completed a chart yes I meant to give you a copy the, um, yeah the board I'd and we have some other we have one very similar to that that, that just just one one is put together yep good yes, and um, so you can see the numbers there there are some categories where over the three or four year span we we kind of trended up a little bit. Mainly the categories are that we 
trended down. Yeah. So, particularly the cohort now across the grade level, there's some, some times where we see a little growth from third grade to third grade to third grade. Or, right. But, but the groups as a whole, and particularly as you get up to the upper end of the system, you know, this year's ninth grade took a pretty good dip, and they were always our highest scoring grade level. Um, but they, they kind of took a... But that's only a point. Was that the well, one? Well, in English, they oh. did a... English, oh. we did fit relatively well. well. We, we struggled. Did. We don't know I why. Know. Yeah, right. the reading, which the reading is what is, we were... It remains to be uh, the area that we've got to strengthen in terms of uh, the testing measures and, and understanding too. what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yes. Particularly in the high school. Mm -hmm. So we've got those numbers, and we'll be digging into those numbers, um, digging into the individuals behind those numbers. Boy. Really yeah. out what we can Look at that reading. Oh my God. The 10th grade. Yeah. For the, See, for the that's terrible. Well, I just want to publicly say thank you, Dana, for pulling this, oh, these well, charts together. You're I welcome. Mean, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I did it just quick. I'm sure that they're working on some too that are, so some. That are more extensive. Some in front of you. I just wanted something, you know, kind of quick yeah. and put together just for. Mm -hmm the board to look at because I know a lot of times well, we just like to dissect them. There's here. There are. Um, some really big challenges. Mm -hmm. We're hopeful that the new literacy yes. program is going to make some big gains. For well, this I mean, kind of year. you know, when you look, you'll or, find I mean, nine. no, you won't, but hopeful. we're hopeful. Good. Yes. But if, if you, I can't, I'm not going to project me sitting here in right. this seat one year from now and saying, wow, well, it's the magic that happens. Yeah. It will, but. It, well, I think you can't lose sight that the whole community has to be a community of literacy right. awareness. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what your plans are to make that happen, but everybody has to talk and think about reading. Right. And writing. Mm -hmm. And unless you can. I don't know. Have magic dust on the on the process. It's going to be a hard sell. And right. it's not going to be a meeting. That's the only no. thing I want to assure you. Because I'm going to ask you here in a few minutes to spend a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, but that not going to that doesn't guarantee. I know that's not a magic pill for yeah. anything. And, and you're really you know, going to be taxing your teachers. You're working with a variable called children. Yeah. Which and you know adults. makes it difficult. But the one, you know, I mean, there's areas in there where we fell way short, but, uh, you know, if you look at that first grade three to grade four, that's a celebration. Yeah, it is. I and mean, the cohort we increased group? the overall student number of students by 15% in a cohort grade level mm -hmm. uh, from grade three to grade four, when we know the percentage of that population is probably one of our highest percentages of special needs students. And so... Uh, even though we're not where we want to be, I think when you go through this work and really dig into it, as our team will, we will have to find those points of celebration uh, because mm -hmm. that is beyond a marginal gain within the confines of, of a grade level. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, once you get to the 50th percentile trying to move a group of students from the 50th percentile to the 70th percentile, you can ascertain gains between 30 and 50 quicker than you can between 50 and 80. Right. Based on the population diversity within, but that never is an excuse to not design as strong of an improvement plan as you possibly can Absolutely. to impact student achievement in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know, we all hope that when we get those scores, they'll be like, wow, you know. I, I know that's what y'all hope for, too. Well, and, and yeah. you know, we have to ask ourselves, uh, for as much as we hope for this to occur, uh, how are we articulating the importance of this score to the student? Is the student as anxious to increase their uh, ability in this process of scoring as we would want to see it? And, and if not, how do we change that paradigm? Because in this testing assessment system, there is really... Uh, it's it's a it's a singular test that we can report back to the child and the parent the following fall. Right. And so it's not tied to an individual grade. 
It's not tied to anything. It really, you know, you have to also not only evaluate instruction, you have to constantly evaluate the level of student and get the commitment by the test taker. It's not a high stakes test. No. Well, in some regards, though, I, I take issue in as much as this is a comparison with the rest of the country. These are nationally normed tests. Well, it's Arkansas. Arkansas and, and that, Alabama. Oh, two. remember on the ACT Aspire? Well, that even makes it harder for me. I mean, a, there's only two states using the ACT Aspire. Why fine. Arkansas is hanging on to that, I don't know. Because it's then they don't have to look at where they are in the 50, 50 nifty. So, but I mean, you know, we're going to have to, this is the, this is the state assessment that we're getting our grade cards from. So therefore we have to embrace the state assessment system that is being given in the state. And, and so we have to, we continue to work with NWA, but we as a group are not confident that NWA is not correlating tightly, tightly to what's being assessed on the ACT Aspire because there's not a true congruence to how our kids are scoring in NWA with how they're con scoring on ACT Aspire. So Thanks we, we me. I'm not gonna pay much attention to Alabama or Arkansas. <laughs> Um, well, that, okay. That's where the assessment lies in which our kids are taking. And so, <laughs> you know, the other thing with that, because there's not strong statistical data, even though we have real heartburn of what's occurring with a sophomore, is you don't know how the curricular rigor is going because this alignment is to the ACT college readiness exam, mm -hmm. which other state standardized assessment systems do not align to the ACT college readiness exam and so if you dig into the expectation you're going to find that the curve of expectation accelerates and, and so just be mindful of ACT Aspire is the equivalency of the prep for the ACT, ACT. composite mm -hmm. and so all of your other state assessment systems are not designed from the roof down from the ACT to the base level, they're built from the basement up. <clears throat> just some food for thought. As you look at these scores and want these scores, just like I do, to improve. Right. I wonder what they would do on a nationally normed <clears throat> test. Well, you could cross correlate that to how our kids are scoring on an NWA assessment and, and view that data as a causal comparative and we've done that for this group in the past Didn't, because we well, have we're that still data. doing that in the junior high school and elementary school and, we added and it to senior the, high have school have we gotten the elementary back yet we will next year we, our third and fourth grade does currently and then we're going to do k or nba so i'd like to see those results we can get them mm -hmm. okay <laughs> all right <laughs> in the interest the of time we will not beat those <laughs> numbers up anymore <clears throat> mr campbell do you have anything else for us no, okay let's move on to our director of support services hayden um you have attached a capital improvement list for the coming school year yes. and these are wish lists or these are you're going to do it these are mostly completed items a lot awesome. of these were on the capital improvements list uh, that we started working on in 2018 and the list was ongoing I'm not going to go through every line item there. Right. Um, we need some updates with some key ones. If you go back to the top, Robin. The uh, last thing you approved for us was the uh, K-1 office intro a remodel. Mm -hmm. uh, right at 86, I think it's a little over that. And uh, just an update on that. We do hope to have everything completed before school starts, before, before kids are back. Yeah. There will be construction ongoing the first week of school. Okay. We can all prepare for that. Um, again, on that, on that note, the day after the board meeting, we ordered everything. The doors, cabinetry, lighting, everything. Good. And it's just a time, time wait. You know, all those doors are coming from Alabama. So, uh, and a normal storefront door for us usually takes for all schools about four weeks to come in. Okay. So we actually had some more doors ordered too, so it's just a time period. Just waiting. So we're waiting. So as of, as of today, I got my got a phone call back. They're doing the cutouts for the doors and the windows Monday. Okay. And then the doors will follow that week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday or so. So that's the plan for uh, that line item number two. <laughs> um, next one on there will 
be asking for approval for tonight. That is our auditorium roadway paving. You may have noticed where we cut the asphalt around the auditorium so far. And, um, and just a much needed area, you know, going back, you know, 15, 20 years, that area never really had the correct <coughs> subgrade to support asphalt. So every time it would rain, water would seep underneath the asphalt, mm -hmm. create little grooves in there, little small, you call it valleys. You'd always have dips. We've paved and paved and patched mm -hmm. for a while. So this is really ripping everything out, putting a six inch uh, subgrade down of rock, Good. and then sloping everything, putting some drainage in, and doing three inches of asphalt. We do three inches because our buses weigh 28,000 pounds, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to support that weight. Right. So mm -hmm. three inches up top, and then for the uh, walkway areas along next to the choir and band hall, uh, we're doing one inch, one to one half inch of asphalt down there too. Okay. Uh, one thing that is on this list, another big item, is the stem wall for that area. <coughs> that stem wall should be up Monday. That's another big ticket item there. And I went ahead and marked it complete because it's so close. The what? The, uh, oh, the auditorium stem wall. So the, wall. The, it's a retaining wall that allows for us to, if you envision that area, the pavement rolled off to grade and so it continuously eroded. Mm -hmm. So we've built a wall to tie the pavement okay. into so it creates the concept of, yeah. of a gutter or mm -hmm. something to tie it in and so it cleans all that up, minimizes the amount of gravel that gets into our drainage. Is that and near so, the band room? It is. Yes. Okay. Right there around the band room. We tore the band room steps out. Okay. Uh, it's we've got a we've got three we'll or go four major projects going on on the campus that if you know Mr. Little and I were talking, if you want to come up and do a walkthrough with me to see some of this work, would love to have you come up. We're kicking around one day next week of doing it, and uh, you know, but there's definitely uh, some work going on on the campus. If you want to kind of see it progressing uh, come up and check it out some of this is going to be pretty tight to the opening of school right <clears throat> uh, no you go ahead okay. what else you want to talk what about else? just hit whatever highlights yeah. you want to I'm just interested in once your auditorium HVAC you know we have four units down uh, for about three years now right so we went ahead and they just finished that today so all units are now up and running good uh, that did include the gym. I passed on the lower one. That there's a gym mm -hmm. concession stand. They did that as well. Gym while lobby. they were here. Mm -hmm. um, Good. We did a retaining wall around the middle school playground. Uh, he completed that yesterday, mm -hmm. and it looks very good. I, I encourage everyone to go there and see that. I mean, they did a walkthrough area. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can highlight, and the asphalt for that area just finished today as well. What so about? What, tell me about the library, because yeah. he was telling me some things about yeah, the elementary library. Area. Much, you know, it's one of our oldest buildings we had on campus, and uh, it really needed carpet replacements. We went back with LVP and mm -hmm. uh, just waterproof, dealing with kids that age for the bathrooms and everything else as well. And uh, it's really the way to go nowadays. I, mean, I, I yeah. talked to a lot of um, facilities guys on Mount Pine, just did the same thing to a whole elementary school. A lot of schools are really going that route just for how easy it is to clean, maintain, Maintenance free for the most part. The vinyl tile. Right, vinyl yeah. plank flooring. Kind yeah. Of like yeah, flooring. yeah. So we did new flooring there, new paint, paint the walls, doors, new lighting, new uh, drop grid, uh, ceiling tiles. One and two. So it looks like a completely new space and uh, much needed. And we had always had a real musty smell in there, just from the old carpet. Yeah. And uh, that was taken care of. And a new roof is going <coughs> on. That roof was ordered the last day of school, and we're still, it's going to be getting installed. August 1st. Wow. So a lot of this is all your waiting period. Yeah. Next door to the uh, <laughs> elementary library, that's where our car rider awning is going. Kind of the same deal there. The last week of school is when we placed that order. That red iron metal is so far back ordered. It's getting delivered and installed August 5th. Okay. Uh, and a little bit of time there, we had since this is a pretty large structure that did require AD approval. So there's a two week period we got to go through. Right on that as well. So some of these are gotcha. time sensitive. Um, Y'all have been busy. Yeah. Very busy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of painting. Um, you can go through <laughs> walk-in cooler for the cafeteria. That was a big one. Cafe that walk-in cooler yeah. is installed and uh, very nice. It's uh, 17, no, it's uh, 15 foot wide. It comes out eight foot. Eight, eight foot, let's say, yeah. Eight foot for the width. So is very, it nice, very nice space. Doubling our size? It is doubling our size, you can say. Okay. Yeah. Good. 
Good. And puts it in much closer proximity to where we're serving pizzas and food. And I'll just say one more item there to get okay. rid of the rest of them. Um, the campus radio repeater, even though it was a kind of a small cost there, we did get somewhat of a grant um, just for communications for schools. That was through Motorola. I applied for that and they awarded us four thousand dollars. Wow. So we're out eight hundred bucks. And uh, we currently have, you know, two way radios to communicate with personnel on campus that are playground, car rider line, mm -hmm. whatever it may be throughout mm -hmm. the school day. And uh, we're lacking pretty pretty large in that area just for static we're picking up. You know, uh, people breaking it back, which has never, never been clear. So uh, we have a radio repeater installed on top of the bus shop now, and uh, all we have about 10 radios in, 20 more of them are coming to take care of, take care of all the staff. So now all of our communications go back to that repeater, which Good. is very high up on the hillside. Mm -hmm. So now we can get about 10 mile radius around the campus. Wow. So we did that on purpose, that way we're having the emergencies, and we go to Snow Springs or go up to Walnut Valley, and when you have a crisis situation, cell towers get jammed. Right. You, have this, you have thousands of people trying to hit a cell tower. Right. You're just not getting through. Right. So now, if we ever do an emergency back to any of these locations, we still have communication. communications. Okay. So. And That's it's awesome. digital, isn't and it? It's digital. So, very hmm. clear. Good. Yeah. And you got a big grant for right. it. So, that was awesome. Well, kudos to yeah. all your work. One question uh -huh. on the elementary work that, that may lapse into the start of the school year. Do we uh, ensure that those subcontractors have had background checks or something? Because we students are there. Five. I mean, normally that work's done in the summer, mm -hmm. but there might be a lapse there of a week or so. So right. we're our own construction manager on that job. We are. Right. So, yes. so we need to be thinking about that. We need to be right. thinking yeah. about background checks yeah. on subs or something to ensure. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Good point. How many yeah. people are you talking about on that job? For the election library? No, no, the elementary like entrance. Awning, oh. the B2, two contractors. We have just one awning and one other. I one. would suggest you just ask those contractors yeah. to do background checks for the whatever right. subs is going to be on site right. during that week. Probably our best strategy there might be using the, uh, when we get into the school year, we typically have anyone coming on the campus if for a first time we run them through our Raptor system, which is our visitor entry system. Yeah. It tags them with a name and it also checks to see if there is any background yeah. history yeah. of those as, individuals. As long as we're just... Right. Okay. Well, letting, you could have mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm problematic sorry. people on campus. Yeah. yeah. These days. But kudos for all your work. I mean, yeah. you, you guys are aggressive. You know, Robin runs that for us at the district office. Okay. Woo! So, <laughs> I wonder how I got in the building. <laughs> Thanks, Robin, for letting me go. I'm sorry. We Thank have a, a, a true, uh, it, it's a funny story because uh, who's getting ready to present next, we had him go through a background check in the system and she inadvertently misspelled his name <laughs> and it came up incorrect and she come around to the back door <laughs> she was like, wanting to tell me about the architect. <laughs> uh, that's, good. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> She wasn't going to let him in. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hayden, do you have anything else for us? That is it. If you have any questions for me, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we are going to do a master facility update. And we have Josh from Modus here yes, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Nice uh, to see you again. You're right. The system works really well. I'm going to pull this up so I can stand. So are you, what are you running off of? Because you and I didn't talk. All I went and linked in was the That's prior right. 85 pages that we had. Do you have a different document do, that you're going to work through? It. Okay. Uh, I knew you had a new one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <yeah>. 120. Oh. <laughs> I can keep this. Uh, you, you tell me what kind of typing that There's a mm -hmm. short form of it. I would like to make sure you get a really good update on kind of where we're at um, and give you a little bit of history of what we've done. And then It'll also talk a little bit about when we did the millage campaign here in May. So there's kind of two okay. portions of this. So I, I know most of the room. I've been in working sessions with them uh, over the last year, year and a half. And so I don't want to repeat for everybody's sake every little detail. Right. But, but I can kind of tell you about the, the I'll story. I'll get down in the weeds. I also want to make you aware that all of our meetings are streamed live. And so we may have viewers. I don't know. Mr. Campbell kind of watches that. But... Uh, there will also be other individuals, and then we are recording 
and archiving every one of our meetings. So we want it to be a, an informative presentation for our board, but make sure that you hit the high point so the community is aware of some of the work that we're doing as well. I just wanted you to be aware of that. Wonderful, yeah, Hayden had brought me up to speed. Um, so we, we got involved with your district uh, right about a year and a half ago from a facility assessment standpoint. Uh, we knew that a millage campaign at some point would have to happen. Uh, we work out of Northwest Arkansas, a small architecture firm called Moda Studio, and the board has hired us to help kind of do a facility assessment and an idea of where do we grow our campus. So one of the things that you will have is a master plan assessment that is done at the division level, and then you have a kind of a master plan from an architecture side. Of where would you grow, how would you grow, and so we got involved at that point. What we started doing is sitting down and getting kind of all this booklet together. And our roadmap for this is that it's an ever-evolving, ever-changing uh, document. It can grow and change, it can morph. Uh, I, we're up to 169 pages of a document that kind of has a comprehensive idea of what these 19 facilities are, uh, where they're currently at from an existing standpoint. Um, kind of mapping out, we want anybody that comes into the district have the, the ability to pull this document up, look at it, and for what it's worth, be able to understand your, your school district, understand your history, understand kind of where you're at, where you're growing, and what does that potentially look like. So these kind of illustrations, if you will, start to show the campus, even since the point that we got involved, you've grown your campus, you've added more uh, square footage and acreage to the campus. So we've started seeing that uh, from a standpoint uh, illustration on your left starts to show the the outline of the entire uh, boundary line of campus. We came in and did some facility assessments where we do a poll of how many buildings you have, what kind of view uh, they are and what condition they are in. Uh, from a both an education standpoint, a building, uh, sorry this is skipping, uh, a building assessment, um, you know, the systems, the roof, the HVAC, the window, the walls, the structure, and went through that analysis. And so without going through all 19 tonight, we, we kind of list them. Um, in the extent of it now, we're up to 21 because there's a few buildings that we've broke out separately. Uh, BNF uh, Engineering uh, is located here locally. They had started, uh, prior to us being involved, they had started doing surveys on campus. Uh, when we got involved, we started earmarking spaces that could grow. We knew you had a circulation uh, from a vehicular standpoint uh, challenge. And so as we've started looking at other areas on campus that would be able to be kind of potential growth, um, they came in and did surveys. So we, you guys have paid for this kind of assessment uh, at a deeper level so that we actually have grade and topography and can kind of really you know, do a deep dive in understanding the cut and fill in those areas. Um, specifically, uh, it's great data. Uh, a person on my end of the spectrum loves having this because mm -hmm. you can say if we want to put something here, how much feet down are we? Or how, how many feet up are we? Uh, where's the water going? What does that start to look like? So this document ha is inclusive of those uh, imagery and those surveys. We also have them digitally. Uh, and we've at this point nearly got the entire campus. Uh, that's a lot of acreage. Uh, from a survey standpoint. They, they've got a deep history with your school district and spent a lot of time uh, over the years prior to us being involved assessing different buildings and improvements. So in a, in a general sense, uh, areas back around the tennis court, That's right. coming back by towards where the K2 area is at, mm -hmm. we've chosen to get specific topography so we can analyze that as a potential building site. The new property in behind the football field, we have all of the data based on all the elevation point changes of that new ground. And then we also own the surveys uh, up back behind the tennis court, kind of going up through the ravine, kind of right. taking us out towards the back of Cobra Drive. So we, we've extended that footprint because we need to build greater certainty into the build of, you know, the feasibility right. of building on those site locations and ultimately would like to say you have an option one location, an option two <coughs> location, and potentially could move uh, 
the tennis courts to create another option for a location and, and then begin to really think about what each of those locations bring. But without having the survey data, it's very difficult for us to sharpen the budgetary number. And so that was an initial investment that we made. And, and of course, I've asked Josh to collect all of that data from BNF so that that's uh, in a document that we paid for and that we own that we could hand off to another provider if we so chose, or if we had multiple uh, construction management companies trying to bid on work on the campus, they could bid apples to apples and have the same document. So Anytime you, you move over into a construction project, you're going to need that data anyway. You'll pay for it now or you'll pay for it later. The beauty is you've invested early. And um, anytime we, we put foundations in, we need to understand what the ground is doing from a topography standpoint. So you've, uh, it, the way I like to see it is because you've had it, you've invested now, it's always going to be cheaper now than it will later for, for those reasons. Um, as he said, we have assessed uh, the athletic areas as well um, and, and looking at the grading and topography and some of those key areas that are flat where it makes some sense and where it starts to, uh, this is an area specifically where there's some fill, uh, the, the football uh, uh, field is just to the north of this site. Uh, this is an area where we talk about, and you'll see in some later slides, where we talk about road improvements and where our prime areas where buildings can happen, you know. You're a challenging district from a flat topography standpoint. <laughs> uh, we understand that. So we try to assess building areas uh, uh, comprehensively uh, when there's opportunities. And again, those 19 uh, to 21 facilities, we deep dive into each one. So part of that early on assessment was scanning of documents, rebuilding uh, 3D models of each so you can start to see the massing. This is a program that we actually did involve and work with your East Lab a little bit. They were able to uh, assist here. So this was a nice experience of professionals meeting the students at their level. Um, they have done some stuff that helped. They went out and done some measurements. We were able to compare those measurements. So kudos to your school district for being ahead of the curve there. And as you can see on each facility, we kind of made sure we have a very good uh, categorical uh, list and, and comprehensive kind of assessment of each building. I'll say this, I work with around 30 school districts at this point, and you guys had most all of the records. Uh, so you, there's an organization that has happened over the years here that helps. Uh, a lot of times we don't have any of this. We have to go out and draw every little single thing. So uh, again, you guys have done a great job of bringing that together. So throughout the 19 facilities, we then, uh, this was kind of completed the assessment portion of it. Uh, we went to uh, Dr. Murphy and his staff and started asking questions about uh, the POR, so the program of requirements at the division level, um, and, and compared the notes with what the division had, where we'd look at uh, deficiencies in the system, where you might be low on square footages, where you might be high on square footages, or it could be those facility improvements from a program requirement. Uh, we've outlined that into kind of more of a, a chart-like form of what uh, you currently have and where some of the things that you could do uh, that would be better as you grow. So some of these are starting to show this is um, the pre-K through 4 spaces that are required. This is the 5 through 8, the 9 through 12 that are requirements. And it got us to the why. Uh, this was the pause in the moment of, okay, why would we need to grow? Why do we need to keep moving? What does that look like? Where do we grow? Uh, what kind of learning environments do we have for our students? And at the time we started having this question come up because we are growing, because we do need more space. Where do we put that space? What do we have and how do we start to change that? Some of your spaces are smaller than state requirements. Not a lot of them, but some of them are. And how do we deal with that from a growth model? So overall, we had design intentions, and we shared this with the staff in a kickoff meeting and asked questions. Those questions came back in different phases of where their uh, priorities were for elementary, natural daylight, you know, outside spaces, spaces that were acoustically uh, performing and pleasing, technology needs, artificial lighting controls, middle school had similar kind of criteria. So we started learning from you. I think. For us, we always want to listen first, 
assess it, and then help provide feedback. So we, the things that would be used in an outdoor space, for instance, would be reading, um, areas where the five senses and learning activities would happen, math and spelling through physical engagement, and then even to the point of growing your own garden, right? Teaching the agricultural components and letting student ownership of those kind of programs. When we went back, uh, we started showing a little bit of what we see in Arkansas right now, some of the projects that we've done so that we could help start to establish a vernacular of what the architecture could be. This is, again, uh, some of the modus experiences, but we don't look at ourselves. We look at what overall, internationally, uh, we believe what the world's doing, not just what Arkansas or not just, by all means, Alabama. But we, we want to make sure we are <laughs> setting the trend. You're going to forever, Sheila. Uh, I think so. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> Uh, but we want to forever think about what the best kind of environment is. So spaces that are courtyards for safety and security, spaces that are amongst the woods, your forested area. Um, and what we started doing is coming up where those spaces would be. So these diagrams were early sketches and where we would put space. Uh, we came back with where facilities could be improved and what does that start to look like. We did multiple concepts or schemes, if you will, a scheme that would be on the north side uh, linking the Fox Pass Road uh, where a campus would sit on kind of the saddle uh, up above. And why there? Because one, it frees up some of the space down in the bottom. Uh, we started looking at multiple options there. Uh, a, a scheme two, which was more of a vertical stack scheme. And uh, some other schemes were where would other spaces go? Where would pre-K go in that event? Uh, how do we deal with the road with it? If it being a K4, where does uh, pick up and drop off happen? So the more vertical uh, nature kind of uh, rose to the top, if you will. We always feel like the best ideas do, so you start to explore that. We did some design, uh, the new roadway system, uh, some diagrams of linking the campus so that you're not a one way in, uh, dead end, and then how do you get out? So we, we looked at the idea of Fox Pass, uh, through the campus would come down and then there's potential to go back by the uh, the other FEMA shelter up and around and potentially connect this way so that you're able to move some traffic flow uh, with the property that you've bought. We've thought through that a little bit so you're seeing some kind of diagrams of zones. Zone 1 being elementary campus could happen there. Zone 2 athletics uh, the, the football field is uh, a space where it makes some sense. You've already got athletics happening in that area or you're on a kind of a plateau. Zone three is another potential because you do have some flat land and then proposed access roads uh, connecting to campus and how does that make that more feasible and proposed going down and connecting to Park Ave. So we've started kind of assessing it from that level. In the zone one, the new elementary, we, we placed it up on the saddle. Here's the court uh, that you see in the bottom. Here's the kind of the aerial version of where that um, area could be. Uh, early design sketches, uh, designing a building for nature, building amongst the trees. So these are some of the things that we generated uh, in the sketch form of what it could look like. Again, we were drawn to the nature of your campus so the buildings should be of the place. I think I've kind of said that from day one. It's not going to be a, a modus building that we did in Melbourne, Arkansas. It's going to be a Fountain Lake building that we did in Fountain Lake, you know, in, in Hot Springs. So the early concept was a more linear, uh, single level uh, campus uh, where there's main kind of pods of space, of community space, and then teaching environments in between. Uh, you started to get kind of some aerial and graphic look to it. Um, some renderings. This was prior to the millage where we started testing it. And concept two was more of a vertical stack scheme. So uh, an idea that uh, we'd be a little bit more efficient and work with the valley, if you will, the ravine. So we stacked it. Uh, these are some concepts and ideas that we were showing off early on. That kind of brings us to the millage. In the millage earlier this year, we looked at that, that portion of the project, maybe at a later chapter in your involvement. We, we got to where we thought pre-K facility improvements, road and infrastructure were more of the priorities uh, right now. And so we started looking at that because I, I'm, I'm doing a few pre-Ks right now and uh, we find that more and more enrollment happens 
and then retainment happens when enrollment happens, right? More people can accommodate younger siblings in the pre-K and people come to them because they have a pre-K, they stay because they're already building their friends and networks in the school system. So we uh, initially looked at zone three as a potential pre-K. There's a site there that makes some sense of putting a building. Uh, this was an earlier effort. Uh, the purple uh, massing block starts to show an athletic piece that could address some of the concerns of aging facilities on one side while having a pre-K off to the back side. Uh, and that still allows us a better security, closer to superintendent's office, thinking about circulation, thinking about efficiency of building, thinking about where play areas are. Again, they're kind of our most vulnerable because they're the youngest students that we take care of. So we were thinking about that. We thought about a building that had classrooms around the edge with the playground kind of more inboard, still use of natural light, uh, but playing with ideas of opening it up and still holding your privacy. Uh, con another concept, Scheme 2, was something that was a little bit different that was tucked in and under. And part of that was actually thinking more of about a FEMA shelter and how you tuck that building underneath the other so it's safer and then have a courtyard out with maybe an artistic wall or a wall, vegetative wall that would pass around. So these are some early concepts in doing that. And uh, would add that if you go back one slide, kind of what we, you know, what we were building was only we we're going to arrive at utilities and that space with a design model that would allow us to later build on top of that. That's right. And, and so the initial funding would only fund the pre-K component, mm -hmm. but it would design and get your utilities housed in where you could to expand upon that at a later date and so that was you know we were really thinking how would we find a location that would complement our new roadway and begin to guide people to uh, allow for elementary traffic to come in in pre-k through the athletic parking come back down and maybe do the pickup drop off for the other existing buildings because we were not building a significant amount of square footage space in the initial uh, millage campaign. Right. I think roughly 10,000 square right. feet is what we were allocating in the project in terms of square footage because that would meet the compliance and we were targeting, I think, five classrooms, five classrooms that's rooms right. and some additional space. <coughs> five classrooms, admin portion, restrooms, uh, you know, other ancillary pre, uh, you know, pre-functional space that is needed. Um, and then playground, of course, and thinking about that. So. Uh, that was kind of the pre-K portion. Uh, athletics, uh, because we, we have tried to make sure we touch everything on campus. We did meet with athletics at one point uh, in this design process. Um, athletics had kind of came on even prior to my involvement uh, from a softball, baseball field. Where would that go? I know you're currently busing students, I believe, to Jesseville, um, yeah, up to yeah, ball fields up there. So the question was, where would we put them? How do we locate them? What does that look like? Uh, BNF had done an early facility uh, analysis of location. Uh, we kind of challenged them to go a little bit farther with that. Uh, you'll see a diagram here shortly. Um, one of the things I tried to do is start to understand what is that practice area and facility. Um, we want to give room where we can give room, right? If we can move some space over and it become a multi-purpose area where there's area that's inside for inclement weather, there's areas for band practice, there's areas for athletics, there's areas for uh, other, other components. So these are some sketches, a diagram of a, a building that would sit there that would help function that, uh, freeing up some of the older spaces that we had here. Um, and then uh, inevitably, you know, we've, we've kind of let that piece as well sit back on the back burner uh, as a not right now as the highest priority. So. We we're trying to evaluate the assessment of that. Um, one of the buildings that you are seeing happen, obviously, in Hayden's review earlier was the, the K-1 renovation. This was part of many different assessment with the, when we got involved last summer, we started looking at, and they had started updating security throughout the campus. If you remember last summer, you guys earmarked some security pieces. This summer, you're seeing some of that in the, uh, in the K-1. These are some early assessments of the area outside. Uh, what happens when you take some of those early children out of here if that building gets reprogrammed? Uh, what happens when it becomes, maybe it turns over to high school, so 
you take the, the new elementary school, uh, goes up the mountain, you reprogram this, is there some canopy, is there some areas that uh, the cafeteria could service outdoor versus just indoor only. So these were some early precedent images and some sketches of what that could be. And we did a series of studies of what those canopies and kind of communal spaces where those high school students, junior high students could come and, and be able to communicate and hang out uh, during lunch. Um, so these were just kind of some early program studies of those, even to the point that it connects to the building and you're seeing a structure you know, just adjacent to it. So maybe those doors open up and connect that cafeteria quite a bit. So these are just early renderings and, and studies on that. The, the building six, if you will, on your master plan, uh, this was that concept of redoing the entry and uh, what you currently have under construction. So these are early assessments of that. This is the finalized one with the canopy shown here, and it would go around the building, of course. So these are just some views of how that new check-in security, that wall opens up and be able to connect that. So that kind of led us to your master plan. And, and the one thing we try to do is break out multiple documents. So I'm not going to deep dive into this one because this is the short form. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that you can pass on and it kind of gives you, without going through 100 pages, it gives you the ability to pass that on. So we did a smaller document that was we released to um, during the millage campaign. Put it, Hayden put both documents on the website, allow the public to see it anytime they need to. Uh, we're an open book, very transparent of where our design intent and what the, the big vision is. I think we're always trying to help give you the tools that you need to grow. Uh, we want to do your architecture, but we know uh, I'm used to working on projects that take eight to ten years, so it doesn't uh, scare me when I see a project process that may take more than just the first year. Um, we're kind of long-term committed to school districts. We, we do a lot of school districts and we do a lot of repeat. Um, these kinds of things, these facility assessments, the cut and fill diagrams of where is a uh, fill going to need for the athletics, where does the cut need to be, we try to assess that. And part of this process is this is the one for the softball fields, but we now have those for the elementary as well. So. Uh, working with BNF, being able to get real-world data, uh, sitting down with people all the time, contractors, we work with a lot of them, and ask questions like, okay, if you're going to cut this, what's cheaper, cut right now or fill? You know, this based on the strata of the land where you're at, here's what we need to look at, because that gives you $300 a cubic yard or $250 a cubic yard. And we understand that your funds are your funds, and somewhat are fixed, so they can't move. When we start a process, we need to make sure we... We analyze it the best we can and be good stewards of the money that you've entrusted to us to make those decisions. So um, at the end of the day, these are kind of the documents that help support that. Again, they ever grow and they change. As questions come up, we want to be able to be a part of that. These are more the illustrative diagrams and site plans that show what the long, the big picture is. This one shows that, you know, if you put the elementary here and you move the courts up above, you've got ball fields and parking and connections to the football field. So we want to make sure that people have um, an idea of that roadmap of where things could go. And what you know, about the lines there that you this year? Additional so this is or currently, or uh, actually this currently is property that is not owned by the district. Um, and we have to kind of work around what that looks like as far as, you know, your, your building we're in right now is currently located right. here. And the road would come up or the road would come down and over. This would be the athletics and pre-K potentially with the road bisecting that. You could come in and, and kind of immediately double back and go down by the uh, ag building. Again, that gets a little tough. Uh, we see that as more secondary, potentially primary being here, uh, unless you were to acquire that land. But and would that be, could that be facility space, parking space, as you look at this? Yeah, what, it what definitely looks. It help us? Yeah, I think your parking is the biggest priority right now. I, the story that I that sticks out in my mind, and I've done it twice. I've been on campus at the three o'clock moment when everything happens in seven minutes, uh, and set up at the library and watched. It's beautifully orchestrated. People are moving out. People are picking up. Parents, as crazy as their their schedules are, are flying in at the last minute and picking up their students. So in seven minutes, I think that was the number, we recorded it and watched how fast that has to happen. 
when you have a campus that has the challenges that you do, you can see the efficiency and how that system works well. And it's always about safety first. Um, you watch how everybody is, is communicating, whether verbally or through eye contact. So, you know, my point is, is that uh, that is a carefully orchestrated thing. So what happens at night when it's dark and you get people going to ball fields and you get young drivers now in the mix and you've got people busing up to athletic facilities? We really don't have a lot of parking up there. Um, we need to kind of figure out how we can change the convolution of the campus. And so we've got parking up there in this diagram. We've got potential that parking can happen here. Uh, this will help give you some overflow for some of the court spaces, auditorium spaces. This will help provide still walkability. You know, you always want it within five minute walk uh, to anybody. You're going to want patrons that need more assistance to be close and then patrons that can take the five minute walk be able to do that. But it helps to be on the, the same level of, of land versus being, you know, 50 feet lower or higher. So, uh, again, it's a challenging district because of the topography. But, um, you know, we've all inherited that. I, I think none of us started by saying, this is we're going to put the school and it's not going to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to change. So our goal is in all this is to help kind of facilitate that and help uh, in every way we can. And so the short form document allows you to pass it out at a different level where people can pick that up and look at it. The long form one is more of an ar archival moment where you're able to keep it on file um, and share it as well. So I would also add we're going to be having a work session tonight. If you go, go back to that one document, it kind of shows the visual, that, that one there. Oops, sorry. That one right there. You know, I, I think part of our challenge that we underestimate is Board of Education you recently acquired in the last two years at this partial property. Right. And so for the school district's inception of history, there's never been an opportunity of conversation about this roadway and the value of the roadway. Right. And so from a board perspective, we might see it, but from a community education perspective, there's probably still several people in the community that don't understand that we even own the property. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a huge educational curve that we're underestimating the value of when you acquire a property and then you're trying to build on that property in a very short period of time. Uh, we have to make sure the community sees our vision and we have to go back out and we have to continue this education process. I think we, that is our, our number one challenge is getting the community to understand the potential because the reason that we never had this roadway in the past is we did not own the property. Right. And, and so this is the first board that's had the opportunity in essence to take on the challenge of that conversation due to the ownership of the property. And I just want to remind the board of that because sometimes it's always through the window of what you look. And so the first thing is educating the community on why we purchased the property to then determine how we're going to use the property. Because it does unlock significant potential for the campus. And that was uh, that was the interest of the Board of Education to purchase the property to begin with. Okay. Because prior to that, you were truly, uh, the roadways that you held were the only roadways you could utilize. And the only other way you could access the campus would have been, and we studied it, but it would have been through the transportation area back over on the roadway behind Sonic, and you know what all that over there looks like, gaining access to Park Avenue, and it was not a clean way to get back to Park Avenue, and so this provides you a clean way to get to Park Avenue long term. So Josh, I have a question. You yes, mentioned earlier that you have the surveys now from BNF, so you do have some estimates uh, on that new property, how much fill it would take, how much cut it would take. Um, I think as we, you know, I think the board as we talk about it can see that a new roadway, maybe some parking up on top, might be one of our higher priorities. Yeah. Getting that traffic flow alleviated. So. Would you or would BNF be the ones who would put together for us an estimate of what you think a roadway like that design, where you, right. you know, would technically BNF would? They're, they're civil engineers, okay. um, and they would work with a contractor to do that. They've okay. now got all the calculations, so they okay. they they know how much, how many feet of cut, and then how many feet of fill, and then we would sit down. I I had previously worked with um, Navold's construction just because we had had involvement, we knew they had 
involvement on your campus and sit down with their heavy division. Their heavy division is their roadway division. Okay. And so they do stuff throughout the state of Arkansas. So I sat down with Chris Kaufman and, and we looked at it just at a loose level. But in the last month, one thing that we've done is actually got all of those numbers. So this diagram that you saw, this two or three back, this one, um, I, we had BNF sit down and cut this in. So the green uh, being fill in this particular area, the cut that you're starting to see, the road loop back. And so, and I can zoom in and uh, those black lines are a thousand lines. Um, I, yeah, so, you're, okay. so it really gets it. Estimate. That's right. So then we begin to take that estimate cubic yards back to correct <coughs> individual <coughs> contractors. <laughs> Let them give us the data uh, as far as the cost because they're they're able to sit down and price out to five subs. And say, yeah, we can do that. And because Napolts, they are not only a general contractor, but they do a lot of that that heavy work or that. Um, that's why we have involved them. It's kind of at the time getting the fastest answers that we could get. Mm -hmm. Now that we have this, um, and we have it also for the elementary sites, um, we're able to kind of really okay. gauge that. So I think that's gonna be something the board's gonna be very interested in getting, is a yeah. good estimate for what that road's gonna cost us. Perfect. Can we go back to that one piece where all those lines are property we don't own? Yeah. yeah. Have, Sorry. have you thought about you know just filling in and taking that um, going to try to see what they would sell that part for and okay. is this the so same way the other way the other way uh what i would share with you mr board is that uh, arkansas is in, where arkansas has uh real estate purchasing is yes. within the confines it would be a just like we bought the last piece of land under open sessions and the work that i've done that that uh yes i've been in communication with the landowner i've been and, and just generalized uh, communication, not finality. I've got a clean abstract title of review to know if there's anything against the property. It, it, is, uh, it is in discussion. Uh, I have crosswalked that parcel with two other parcels across the road and did a, a kind of a comparison and the amount of money on the other parcels across the highway, which if we had parking across the highway, then we'd have to cross the highway. So, uh, you know, when I look at priority and knowing the roadway potentially is going in there, the other thing that Josh did not mention is the roadway existing. Uh, if we acquire the property, we could be uh, not crossing the creek. And so there's gonna be a cost to build the uh, culvert and cross the creek. You saw the green fill lines and the, and the red. And so uh, to answer the short form is yes, I am in communication and to Right. Oh, he, he lives does there. live there. And, okay. This uh, is a house up on the yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so you also have. I've been uh, trying to see that house, but yeah. it's got a lot of foliage. Yeah. Of when they cut that hillside back, when the new road comes through, you'll see it very well oh, because oh, they're going to cut it within about five feet of this house. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> he might be interested in selling them. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Red flag up there by their front porch. Was there? Don't, do not knock. Huh? Yeah. Do y'all have any questions for Josh? Thank you so any much. Any closing Absolutely. remarks? No. I, again, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Uh, I've had the privilege over the last year to meet all the other board members, and so I'm looking forward to how we can assist you guys moving forward. And again, we we love seeing uh, campuses grow, um, and we're here to help in any way we can. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, just so you are aware, uh, we are going to be having some formalized discussion and work session. You're more than welcome to remain in the audience for another hour or so as we get to those topics as we budget goals and uh, a 2020 proposal or no proposal based on just some generalized. We just want to have an open discussion about reflecting on the prior campaign and what our next steps are going to be. So I think it would behoove you to kind of sure. stay with us here for another hour or so. And uh, thank you for your presentation. You bet. Thank you. Okay. That was a good update. And uh, Robin, just as a note, I'm going to uh, uh, unlink.
the link that we had in there and Josh will give us the new link we can link it in the morning okay, okay. Good. <coughs> um, we're gonna move into our new business section and um, being that Corey has not made it yet I am going to ask Cindy as the vice president if you would read our first motion motion to approve the purchase of supplemental reading materials for K8 K through 8 in the amount of $132,163.88 from single source provider Heinemann utilizing Title I funds. Okay, let's open up discussion on this motion. Um, Mr. Campbell? Yes, ma'am. It's um, supplemental reading materials that make us eligible for our federal funding to use federal funds to buy this. It's not mandated. Um, are these are these uh -oh. classroom libraries? Uh, they are reading sets. Yes. Okay, it's the start of the classroom libraries. Is what is that what you would call it? It's supplemental reading material. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be. We have okay. to be careful what we call it. In what we say, and that's why this motion is worded exactly the way it is. Okay. In or, in order for us to use Title One funds. Yes. So okay. It's, it's additional <clears throat> materials that will add on to our reading program okay. in our classrooms. The teachers will have sets of books that they will be able to supplement their instruction with. Okay. And they come from a single source provider. That's why there are no bids okay. for this amount of money. So that's why, the, again, the motion is very specific. In that respect. Okay. And it does cover each grade, kindergarten through eight, yes. each Yes. grade level will receive some okay. there enough room. materials that all <coughs> teachers will be able to yes. have their own independent yes. supplemental materials yes, so there's there are a, a couple of grade levels where we were going to share a little bit on the front end um, were those upper grades or lower grades yes ma'am upper and lower upper it, and lower it, it okay just depends on the number of kids in the grade level gotcha. is what we're looking at there um, this is part of our rethinking and our um, of how we're going to use our title one going forward yep. so it could very well be that we come with something similar to this in the way of supplemental reading materials again, next, next year. year good yeah so you can expand yes the collection and use materials. and use the title one funds to do it yeah yeah oh, that's fun okay do, does the board have any questions on this motion um, that this is a motion to approve the purchase of supplemental reading materials for K through 8 in the amount of $132,163.88 from single source provider Heinemann utilizing Title I funds. If there are no other questions, I will ask that all in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. The motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> Thank you for doing that work for us. Thank you, Ms. Curry <laughs> and Mr. Janaski. Thank you very much. I got the wording together. Okay. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you for that. Yes. Your Which, efforts are appreciated. Thanks all around tonight. <laughs> okay, Cindy, we have uh, another motion. Ma'am. Motion to accept the proposal from BNL Paving Incorporated in the amount of $55,645 for auditorium roadway paving. Okay. Hayden discussed this in his update uh, about the, you know, tearing it all out, putting in the proper amount of underlayment and the three inches of asphalt, right. correct? The only thing I'll add, we was over 20,000, we had the upper bid for it. Okay. So we're there for two weeks uh, online. Okay. And uh, we only had one bid come in and it was, you know, Okay. okay. Now, does this roadway is it starting at the corner of the auditorium? It's still, you know, you know, there's it's like a quad set of doors. Uh huh. You your front door of the auditorium. Right, and the then you have the two sets of doors. Right there on the side of the auditorium, up, wrapping all the way around to where the retaining wall starts, right in front of the cafeteria. Okay, so this about where the steps at the yeah, football field. Nineteen thousand square feet. Total. It doesn't go all the way to the football. No, field road. No, it does not. Just sort of to the cafeteria. Roughly 200 feet before the turn. Okay. 
roadway. Okay. Roadway. Will this widen it any, or is it going to be the same size? Four and a half feet. Oh, it will widen yes. at four and a half yeah. feet. Wow. Yeah, one thing, even though we're not paving to the football field roadway going up, uh -huh. that price does also include, since we're double stacking our cars for the elementary car to pick up, there is about a three to three and a half foot that varies through the left hand side of that, kind of like a city pit, just in place down the kind of ditch line. Okay. So it will be corn in there as well. It's not going to look as the best as, you know, what we're doing, but it's going to fill the area in that way. We can double stack much easier today. That okay. Area. Good. Well, that's good to know. Is there any excavation that they need to do other than all that's been taken care of? This is just putting right. it back together. Right. Okay. All the excavating has already, already been done. Okay. Did we do that in house? Uh, about half. Okay. okay. Which saved us a lot. Yeah, we were in a mini eggs. We've had it for about three weeks. Okay. So we, I knew, I noticed that as we drove by on Park right. Avenue. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, so the motion is to accept the proposal from B&L Paving in the amount of $55,645 for auditorium roadway paving. If there are no other questions from the board, I will ask that all in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. The motion carries 4-0. <laughs> All right, Cindy, mm -hmm. next one. Motion to accept the letter of resignation from the personnel below for the Corlin position for the upcoming 2019-2020 school year. Sarah Day, high school secretary. Kimberly Baker, bus driver. <coughs> Mandy Vines, elementary teacher. Okay, and we did have links in there so that <coughs> you could see their um, letter. letter of resignation. <coughs> uh, any board members have any questions about that? So we're going to accept the letter of resignation <coughs> from the personnel that Cindy read for this upcoming school year. Mm -hmm. All right. If anybody, no, no other questions on that? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. The motion carries 4-0. And that's the end of our new business. Um, we are going to take about a let's say five to seven minute break um, that concludes I will say our regular meeting is now adjourned we're going to take a five to seven minute break then we're going to the board is going to have a work session you are absolutely invited to stay if you would like you do not have to there's a link in here about what we're going to be talking about a lot of what we're talking about is um, getting our newest board members up to speed on things like the goals that the board has set and um, you know how we do our superintendent review mid-year mid-year review and um you know just some basic things we're going to talk about the millage for 2020 mm -hmm. and discuss whether or not we want to proceed with that so you and are we'll welcome do, we'll do a financial budgetary review so yes we'll we are going to review yes. the budget so you're welcome to stay if you would like we will be done by 8 30. don't know if you want to stay but you're welcome to um other than that we're going to adjourn and take a little break for the board and come back in here in a few minutes. <coughs> Thank y'all for being here. <coughs> and she will need some water. Yes. Get your son. Maybe Corey will be here before.